Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Jacob, and in this video we are going to be creating this modal widget thing here. So, let's get started. Alright, so over in the HTML, it's really simple. We have a navbar, that's just there for show, um, and a main section with our button to trigger our modal, a link to our JavaScript, a link to our CSS, and I'm using the Roboto font from Google because I really like it. Um, in the CSS, there's the styles that make everything look pretty. All this will be on GitHub, and um, we'll be filling in this modal section here. And our JavaScript is pretty empty. So for now, this is what our page looks like. It does nothing, but it looks kind of cool. So let's get started in the JavaScript. I have um, this set up pretty basic, a class for modal and a constructor. So I'm going to start off by saying um, this dot modal container equals document dot um, create element. And that'll just be a div, a div. Um, this dot modal container dot class name. Um, that'll be modal. Beautiful. Um, and this this element is actually going to appear as a darkened backdrop behind the little window type thing that pops up. Um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Okay, so then um, document dot body dot append child this dot modal container and that looks good. Then I'm gonna say const because we don't have to um, have this be like a, a member variable of the modal class because we're just using it here in the constructor to set things up. Um, content container. This is going to appear as the little window that pops up. So this is the little window thing. Um, equals document dot create element. That's also going to be a div. Um, content container dot class name equals uh, container. How about? Sounds good to me. And then this dot modal container dot append child content container. All right, now let's make our close button. Const close button equals document dot create element uh, button. And we'll style this up so it doesn't look like your average button. Um, close button dot inner HTML equals we're going to use the times sign to make it look like an X close but oh wait no um, this dot um, content container in dip, 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 a pen child um, close button like that so we'll put our close button inside of our content container and we'll add a click event listener to that so that we can listen for clicks and when the close button is clicked we will close the modal so I'll say close button dot add event listener click and we will fill this out later so I'm gonna leave that empty for now so we have the close button and then one last element to deal with, and that is this dot content. That's actually going to hold the actual content um, of the modal, so you'll be able to change what's inside of the modal. Um, this dot content equals document that create element. Yet another div. Could probably use be using some more semantic elements here, but whatever. Um, and this dot content container a pen child content whoops this dot content ah, come on there we go now let's make a set HTML this will set the content of our modal so this dot content dot inner HTML equals value here um, and then we'll say open that'll be a method and close That'll also be a method, and it'll be really simple. It'll just be this dot modal container dot class list add open, and um, whoops, and 
remove open like that so that's pretty much it wait a second no we have to add this handler here uh, this dot close there's our event thing um, our event handler so now um, actually let's make a modal and just open it real fast so I'll say let m equals new modal uh, m dot html equals hello world and m dot open like that so now if I come over here it'll just should just wait a second whoops Uh, what line was that? 13. Pen child content container. Oh, because it's not this dot content container. Uh, of course. I don't need that. I was just typing this dot in front of everything. <laughs> All right. Now it should work. And we have hello world and this junk down here. It's really ugly. Um, so let's get to work styling that. So it's an open modal container, and that's what it looks like there. So we have a modal. I'm going to also do modal.open. And actually, just for the sake of readability, I'll put it above the modal styles. Uh, you'll see why in just a moment. Then we'll also have modal, modal um, container like that, um, and I'm going to add a class to our close button here, close button dot class name equals close button, so we can definitively or more definitively select that button, uh, so I'm going to come over here and say modal close button, so those are our styles. Um, by default, our modal is going to have a display of none. I could, you know, do some more complex styles so we could animate the entrance of the modal, but I'm going to go the easy route and just turn the display on and off. So display none versus display flex, and that's why I'm putting modal.open here because it's just one rule, and it'll be really clear that it's changing between display none and display flex. Okay, so then we're going to want position fixed. And remember, this modal element is actually going to be um, the, the gray the gray out background, the, the, the element that prevents you from clicking on everything else behind it. So I'm, so it's position fixed, background color, RGBA, 0, 0, 0 on 0 0.6. Um, so that'll be a transparent-ish gray or black, I guess, not gray. Um, all right, then I'll say top zero, left zero, um, bottom zero, and right zero. Uh, let's see how that looks. Absolutely lovely, except um, this nav bar I set a Z index on so because it has a drop shadow on it, so that the drop shadow appears above this. Um, orangish element, so I'm going to have to set an even higher Z index on the modal, so I'll say Z index um, 2 should do it. There we go. Okay, now it's completely above everything else here. And we can get working on styling the container here. So container, um, well, yes, so I'm going to say back ground color white um, border rate radius one rem if I can type properly okay um, width uh, 50 viewport width units um, looks okay I'll add some padding of two rem maybe all right um, you know what maybe half or two five that looks like it might be okay to me um, 
I'm gonna go back up here and add some more styles. I'm gonna say justify content center and align items flex start so that it now appears right here. Then I can add, um, I think I'm gonna add padding on the modal. Padding um, 10 VW and zero. No, that's way too much. Um, forget it, not, well, yeah, we should probably do um, height units actually. What am I thinking? All right, much better. Um, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Okay, now let's style that close button. All right, we'll say font size maybe 150%. Background color, um, transparent, border, no border, and cursor, pointer. Okay, and we should position this. So I'm going to give this position relative so that we can style this uh, as position absolute. And then say top, maybe like 0 0.3 rem and right 0.5 rem. And there we go, now we have the X in the corner here. If we click it, it doesn't do anything because I did not bind this, bind to this. Um, so I have to say dot bind to this because otherwise I'm saying this dot close and then it will apply that to see I have this error here it says cannot read property class list of undefined because um, the this object in this function um, when it's being called from this event handler or event listener when it's being called from that event listener this the this object starts referring to the close button so I could either say um, this that close that bind this at least that better work Yes, um, or I could say, um, take a function here and say this.close, and this that would also work. Um, but I, f I think I'm gonna leave it like that for now, just cause, why not? Um, if you want to read more on that, well, I would actually recommend reading up on how the this variable or, or object, um, how it works. It's um, quite interesting, can be confusing, but if you understand how it works in JavaScript, is very useful. Um, obviously, I had a little bit of a brain fart there <laughs> and forgot, but luckily I remembered in time and didn't make a fool of myself on this recording. Okay, so there we go. Um, Nope, that I, what am I talking about? We have to add the click listener to our button and then we'll be done. So I'll just say docu, duh, document dot get element by ID modal trigger add event listener click and then um, I'll make some variables here. Say let I equals zero m equals new modal, like that. Okay, then over here. Um, I'm gonna say m dot html equals you click, you've opened this modal um, i times. Okay, and then m dot open, like so. Okay, so refresh here, click here. You've opened this modal one times, plurality. And there you go, it works. Now, we co of course, we could add like um, modal listeners to maybe this one or, or this link here, this login link, this sign up link. But there you go. That is how you make a simple modal um, widget type element thing. Add that feature to your website. Um, 
couple of notes about this, um, things you can do with it. Um, one is animate this opening. Obviously, I'm just toggling a CSS class here, so you could add transitions or an animation or something. For now, I'm just changing from display none to display flex uh, to make it appear. But if you animate it, that would be really cool. Another thing that you could do is add a click listener to this gray overlay. So if you click on this overlay, that also closes the modal. Um, you could also maybe make it so that um, as, if you click on this link, it'll give you a hash to your URL here. It's maybe hash like login or something. And then if you navigate to this URL just cold, um, it'll open that modal as well. That'd be another cool thing you could do with this. So anyways, guys, there you go. That is how you make a simple modal um, element thing that you can put on your website. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you learned something from it. The code, as almost always, is on GitHub. Um, my name is Jacob. Don't forget to subscribe and have a good one.